everyone, welcome to Football DNA. Today I'm delighted to welcome a real, real good friend of mine, an old teammate at West Ham days, a great player on the left wing. I just remember him striding up and down that left wing at Upton Park. Unbelievable player. Matthew Effrington. Matthew, you there, mate? Great to see you again, Paul. You too, pal. Everything good? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good very man, good. Good man, sir. So we're just going to talk about Matty's career what the future holds for Matty and just you know give you an insight into, into his life as a, when he was playing and that etc so Matty was born in Truro am I insane That's correct Cornwall. Truro Cornwall lived in Falmouth how did you end up at Peterborough I was just gated randomly Peterborough had scouts there at the time really um, a fellow called Kit Carson um, was the academy director and he was the one that, that picked us up and um, invited us up for a trial a few of the boys come from Wales as well, met me at Bristol, Simon Davis and that. And um, so the train up. They was at Bristol at the time, so they, they, so they, the scouting network was everywhere. No, Simon, Simon was in Wales, so they, they like, have a for West West Wales, like, you know, furthest point of Wales. And um, they pick them up there, so they get the train from there, meet us, we all meet at Bristol, and then go on to King's Cross and up to Peterborough. Fantastic, I mean, that's impressive for Peterborough, like scouting that far Yeah, no, yeah, they had a good that. system at the time, we had a really good youth team. So that was, what age was that? Was that around 15, 16? Or no, I moved, um, I joined Peterborough when I was 12. Did and you? Uh, then after a couple of years, I was doing a lot of travelling at weekends, finishing school on a Friday, train up, train back, getting back late Sunday night. Sometime mum and dad would come and pick me up at Bristol, other times I'd go all the way to Plymouth. Um, and they started to move up in the end. So I moved up when I was 14 years old. Really? Mum and dad and sister moved up, sister wasn't too happy. <laughs> but, um, that's the, you know, and that was... And that was for your football? For my football, they thought I had a chance. The travelling was a lot. So people must have said no, that yeah, like, yeah, you know, like the they said that I was going to sign schoolboy forms, um, YTS. Then I got to 15 and they offered me a professional contract at that time. Well. That's incredible for your family, isn't it? It is, yeah. Really but, you know, there were circumstances involved. My old man's business weren't going well. He wanted a fresh break. But, um, yeah, it, it was still, you know, my sister still ribs me about it. <laughs> she didn't <laughs> she want to and do you know what? It was it was a sacrifice from from everyone's point of view, but mine and my sisters mostly because we were at school. We'd grown up with our friends throughout throughout our lives, um, and then it was my first year at secondary school in Falmouth. And then at that age, it's quite a big thing to then go into another secondary school. Yeah, really do you know what I mean? Yeah, really. Um, so yeah, that was I had to contend with that as well. But ultimately, it was the right decision. Because well, it certainly paid off, mate, didn't it? I mean, so you was at. Peter, you made your debut early as well. Yeah, didn't you? 15. 15 yeah, Barry, as well. Barry came in at 15 and said, I was doing my GCSEs that year, and um, it was the last game of the season, Brentford away. And uh, Barry said, I'm going to chuck you in. That's incredible. Yeah, 15 minutes. You must be one of the. You must I'm be still one the youngest. youngest. Pete, 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 you must be one of the youngest in the league as well. Though, yeah, I think, yeah. Well, it's a club. Yeah, many more, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It was, so, yeah, it was, um, it was an experience. And Barry was the manager, Barry, Barry was the manager. manager. Yeah, yeah. So that was an experience in itself. Yeah. Do you know what? I've, I've always said it, and I maintain it to this day. Barry was absolutely brilliant for, for the young lads. Because we had a really good youth team. Got to the semi final of the Youth Cup, which for Peterborough and the League Two side, well, which they were at the time, is unheard of. We had some really good players. Um, and he looked after us because ultimately I think he knew he was going to get a few quid out of us. Yes, well, that, that, that would do for Barry. <laughs> exactly. I, I must admit, I was a Peter. Yeah, and, he's top man. I enjoyed it. He was a really, really good man. Well, that, like you say, if he's making a few quid out of it as well, yeah, exactly. he might go the extra mile. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, he, he was, um, he'd let the older players know about it if, if they weren't performing, but he'd, he'd leave us youngsters alone. Would he? Yeah. So, you, so you're, you're not even really in the youth team then? Well, you're not the youth team age, you're a schoolboy still. Schoolboy, you know? yeah, in the first team. Then, then I was dipped in and out of the first team, to be fair. I was playing more youth team football yeah. when I signed my first year. Um, YTS forms, uh, £42.50 a week. Best times. Loved it. Yeah, great times, aren't yeah. it? Really good times. And you, you mentioned Simon Davis before, did you? Mm. He came at the same time as you on trial for Peter and He did, yeah. He was a year older than me. Right. But, um, yeah, and we played the youth team together, obviously. And, um, Sometimes I play up in age, so be playing with them together. Because, because, yeah. because after that, that's when Spurs came. Yeah, Spurs came coming in. Ball, ball both of us. Yeah, yeah. And how much was that a joint? Was that a joint fee for you both? Um, I think they paid a bit more for him. I think they paid seven fifty for him and half a million for me. Did this? That's good. Um, yeah, and but uh, prior to that, we signed in January two thousand. Um, in the summer of ninety nine, pre season. We got invited up by Sir Alex Ferguson to go and train with Man United. Did you really? And um, God, that was the '99 treble winning team. And we trained in the first team change rooms with them. Did Teddy, you? Teddy was there. Obviously, ultimately went and played with Teddy. Yeah, in West Ham, But 
um, Roy Keane, Gary Neville. You know, it's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> that's, that's and for us, I was I was seventeen years old. How did you find that? Like, daunting. Yeah, it was. And we trained them, so we thought we were going out to train with the youth team. He put us straight in with the first team to change with them, and we trained with the first team. Um, an unbelievable experience, but we were so far out of our depth. You know, we we, we started off with keep ball as most teams do these days, and um, boxes. Yeah. And uh, there was about eight of us, two youngest go in, so it was me and Simon, yeah. Skulls, uh, Beckham. You ain't getting the ball, surely. Nicky Butt on the outside, me and Digger in there for 20 minutes. <laughs> Long warm up over, we never had to touch the ball. But again, you know, you can't, you can't buy those experiences. No, it's, no, it's just, um, they were a special side. And we played a game against Boca Juniors, first team had gone off, we played in the U team against Boca Juniors, done really well. We went up in his office because um, Peter wanted us back for, for the first league game of the weekend and um, he said, really rated boy, I think a lot of you. He goes, right now, I'm going to keep an eye on you and go from there. Ultimately, Spurs are the ones that got us in January. So, it's yeah. Yeah. so that, that's incredible. I mean, you almost uh, that's got full of confidence, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, it's just coming back from there, you, you know, you're walking on air, aren't you? I bet the lads as well with Peter when you come back, it's like, they must be thinking, look at the big time boys. Yeah. Yeah. But, do you know what, though? What I found is, it, like, I'm not being dickhead enough, but we were very good youth team players. Me, me and Simon, especially, probably the two standouts. David Billington was another one that went to shift for Wednesday eventually, and then the injury didn't work out for him. But um, it was harder going back then and playing League Two football after training with you know that amount of quality. Um, and I always found that when I was playing in the youth team, I was I play up a year, I play up two years. Thrive, do okay, do well. When I went back to my age group, for it's some different. reason I struggled a little bit more, and, and that's just that's the way it is sometimes. And maybe it's a subconscious thing think, that yeah. you're too good. It's like a psychological, yeah, I don't know, because you don't want to. Maybe you don't want to go out and have a sort of bad game, or you think no, too good. For it. You want to yeah. go out and show people how good you're in every game. Yeah, that's probably why you got to the standards you use that as well. But it sometimes works like that, doesn't it? it does, yeah. It's, it's strange like that. So after. Three man you back to people then Spurs then came in for you? Came in, yeah, signed January two thousand. Who's the who's the manager? George Graham was manager at the time. David Pleat was um, director of football and he'd been given a budget to spend on young English talent to come into the club. Um, so me and Simon signed and in January two thousand, so like you know, the likes of Genova there, etc. So you were the did, did you go and ch- go straight into their change room? No, we didn't. Manu? No, well, they, they, they had a they had a crop there. Sort of an early twenty three group. Wasn't yeah, it? exactly. They had the youth team, then they had a crop of first, second year pros that were dipping in and out of the first team training. But Chris Hewton would take that group. So it's obviously doing fantastically now. But he, he was the one that would take our training every day. Um, brilliant coach, good man as well. And uh, yeah, so we were like put in that middle group, dipping in and out of the first team. Brilliant. Um, that must have been. And there was, was like Ginola there at the time. Ginola was in the first team, obviously, Darren Anderson, Teddy come a bit later, obviously, Gus Poy come a bit later as well. Um, plenty of good players, Les Ferdinand. So going down to Spurs, uh, Peter, obviously, it's a bit far to travel down there, so yeah. you, you, you're on the move again. On the move again. Yeah, so did they put you up down there? Yeah, or? They did. They um. You know it quite well, Jim. They put us up in the Wolf and Matthew Barrier. Don't know that one, mate. No. no um, yeah. They put us up there for three months until we found the property. Um, they helped us out somewhat with that, so we were looking about, looking for properties. Um, but yeah, three months in there, quite a long time, stewing over things, you know what I mean? Me and, me and Simon used to have putting competitions up and down the corridor. Yeah, that's, that's what hard at that age, isn't it? Yeah, passed the time away. I was 18 years old. and Because, um, you know, I mean, you're obviously going to training. Yeah. You know, you, I mean... Finish relatively you early. You know, always finish relatively early. A little bit after, like we yeah. used to, you know, play head tennis and that in the, in the gym and stuff like that. But you know, you're still, still back in your for three, four. Exactly. Surely, what do you do for the rest yeah, of the day? It's, it's, you know? it's a tough time. I mean, mm. we're joking about it there. We might, but I was 29 when I moved down. I was yeah. in there for for three months, and mm. that's probably a little bit different to the, what you were doing at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but it is at least a long time. It's, it's hard in hotels, and people don't realise that, that the hardship. Is, Oh, she don't sound no. right because you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're they're paying for everything. You know, they're paying for your meals. It's a beautiful for place. Rooms. It's a beautiful hotel, but still, it, there's the there's the mental side of it. That, that's that's the thing that and I defy anyone to be shacked up in a hotel for three months. And don't get me wrong; it sounds fantastic, but it's going to get a bit boring. It's, it's a bit tedious it's after a while. You know it's mean? crazy, don't yeah, exactly. you? Yeah, exactly. Your mind starts playing tricks with you and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so did you? So you, you was at Spurs there. So you signed. Did you sign? Must sign a decent uh, 
uh, long, long yeah, no, I think, yeah, do you know what? I can't even remember. I think it was a good four or five year contract we signed, yeah, yeah, professional contract. So, did you stay in after the hotel? Did you go and get your own place down there? Or? Yeah, we, um, me and Simon obviously didn't want to leave each other's side too much, coming down to the bright lights and etc. No, it's and, it's um, nice, I saw them like that. Yeah, we thought we'd go to Church Langley on near Harlow. Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know. Yeah, nice place. Yeah, just. Yeah, we, we didn't want to go too extravagant too early. Yeah. But it's a, it was a lovely area. We liked it. And um, yeah, we, we bought down there. That's great. Do you, did you enjoy your football at that time? Was, did you find that <coughs> tough when you got there? Or I, did I did enjoy it. Trip? I did enjoy it. I just feel like my whole time at Spurs, you know, again, massive club, as you well know, um, just didn't, felt like, didn't feel like I got a fair crack of the whip. Right. Uh, um, George Graham left. Um, Sure, Houston took over for a little while, then David Plea, and I actually made my debut in that period. Of, um, I made my uh, substitute debut. What age was that? Uh, God, that was, uh, I think I was 19. Was you? At Anfield against Jamie Carragher, who was playing right back. And then I made my full debut a week or two later against Man United. So that was the baptism of fire. That's a great start. Yeah. At least. But, um, and then again, I was dipped in and out, and it wasn't until really Glenn Huddle comes to the club that I started be more regularly involved in the first team and Simon was you know more involved than I was um, and I just felt my chances then that was my time to shine and I wasn't getting that chance in my opinion I was getting dipped in and out Christian yeah. Zieger he brought in he was a left back very obviously German international great player but um, he was he got injured he had a bad knee injury and I played uh, I think it was nine or ten games on the bounce team done really well I don't think he lost the game and I thought Christian's even come back from injury. I thought, right, he's not going to leave me out here. Yeah. He can't. I've, I've, I've done really well. Who's the manager then? Glenn Hoddle. That's and, and he put Christian back in. It kind of disheartened me a little bit. And I thought, I'm going to get a chance here. Yeah. And then the opportunity came to go to West Ham. And I took it. So that was, that was West Ham, and that was mm, 2003. What? That was 2003. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, Freddie, can you say went the, the other way? Ah, it did, yeah. Yeah, part of a swap deal. Um, and yeah, that was it. Really, but my, that was when I first went to West Ham. But to be fair, and I mean, at West Ham, I mean, I played against you there, and obviously, we'll touch on it as well, playing with you there as well. So, I mean, did that really kick you off a little bit, I suppose, yeah, yeah. I suppose when you got to West Ham? Who took you there? Was that, was that Pods? No, Roder. Was that Roder? Roder took me, then he got the sack early on. So Trevor Brooking took over for a while. Yeah. Then Pardew coming after that. How did you find Trevor? Just going on that, because I heard Trevor was, he was really good. I'm not, yeah, he was, he was really good. I just don't think he had any desire to be a manager. No. But he was very, very good. He spoke so well. And it's Trevor Brooklyn at the end of the day. You're going to listen to him. To him. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, he was, what a great man. Fantastic man. Yeah, so, so Paul was then come in. Yeah. And did he, did he say anything when he came in? He, he, he said something to me personally, which I liked and maybe want to play for him. Well, it was just, well Paul's is good like that. He is he very good like that. And see, you know, people have got their opinions on on parts I, I take people at face value and how I find them he was fantastic yeah. to me and, and a very good manager in my opinion um, obviously things haven't gone too well for him um, lately but you know, it's just, I think that's management really in general absolutely so, um, I'm, with you, I'm with you on that I, yeah. I like I thought it was a good man management he like was, yeah. he's very what's the most I suppose you should say Marmite like, really you, yeah you exactly you know, exactly yeah. and uh, it, the, there's no in between he just um, he just signed for the club and I think it was Trevor Brooking's last game but Pardew was in and around the change room and that and I was actually injured for that game and I was in the change room at half time the lads had just gone out and I was still there just getting a bit of treatment on my ankle Pardew came up to me and said I'm going to I'm going to um, base my team around you he said because I remember you at Spurs he said and we had um, when I was at Reading we had scouts come and watch you I wasn't too sure he goes but since I've seen you at this club these, even these last two or three months he said the team's getting based around you. For me, I was a confidence player. I need, yeah. you know, you get players that need to kick up the backside. You get players that need confidence. I was one of them. Absolutely. If you went, if someone went for me when I didn't think it was deserved or they did it in a certain way, I'm gone. Yeah. I'm not playing for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, again, yeah. my own insecurities maybe, but that's just the way. It is. But I think that's half the battle as a manager is reading people and which way to, to take them. Yeah. You know, I had this conversation with Dave. And- that is exactly what we said. Yeah. Was, our good management must be finding the, the best buttons to press. Exactly. That gets the best yeah. out of them on yeah. the pitch. Definitely. And I've worked with managers that are very good at that, and I've worked with managers that are not so good at that. And I think that was one of Pardew's better traits, without a doubt. Um, and yeah, he just said to me that and it made me feel a million dollars. And I thought, you know what, I want to play for you. And um, that season, I went on to get hammered a year, which was, you know. And that was your first season? My first season. Brilliant. Yeah. So he's pushed all the right buttons. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it's right, I mean, I don't. Whatever age you are, mm. 
and I don't care what play or and you always want to be you know feel a million dollars going on at the pitch. Today, I even remember I was at the end of my career. Paul Lambert was the same for me, and I went on loan for him. And he asked me for months to go on loan. When I was at West Ham at the end, I weren't playing at West Ham. I was at Colchester, so I didn't fancy dropping down. But he asked me for months at Wickham and months. He asked me at Colchester. I went in and he's, he's gone. They said more or less the same as you. You know, this I'm basing this manager now for the months you're here. Mm. This is you're gonna you're gonna take us here. You just feel a little. You go like pitch yeah. and that's how you come to thirty. You probably want to put that extra one percent in in training. I think you so. know, it's, there's many things you know that that it helps you with. So it, it definitely is an art. And like you said, that so you you that's hammer of the year that mm. year, and that's mm. you're in some illustrious company there. Yeah, aren't I know the players who's won that. I've always said it. One of the greatest honours I ever received. You look at some of the names mm. on that trophy, and um, yeah, hugely hugely humbling to get that award. Yeah, that's brilliant. So I mean. And I've, I've obviously had a look, and you 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 represented England at every mm. at every level up to twenty one. Mm. Short at that time, do you, would you ever get close to the four hundred? You yeah, must no, have been I, close I, to it. I probably had a, a, a moment of six because it was nine desperate months, for a left side. Yeah, but, and six or nine months at West Ham, and even um, my second third years at Stoke, uh, I definitely feel I warranted at least a cap. Listen, it never happened. Is it a regret of mine? Definitely. Mm. You know, I, I think, I think I'll. Well, I'd have loved to play for England. Of course. Like, you know, I'm a passionate Englishman, and yeah. I'd have loved to play for England. But it never happened. But it's still a regret. Who was the manager around that time? You had Capello. Um, he came to watch me actually when I was at Stoke. We played Man City away really? in, the, in the FA Cup. And Pulis actually told me before the game, he said, Capello's here. He's obviously not just watching you solely. So that's that's further down the line. Yeah, it? exactly. So um, I was 28, ish 29 then, I think. And, um, we're desperate for a left side as well, Yeah, we? but I've done my knee after 10 minutes. Oh, done my legs in my knee. And, um, you know, I'm coming off on that stretch of thinking. Oh, <laughs> but, you know, there, there was mitigating circumstances, but ultimately it never happened. And it is a regret of mine. I, I definitely think I was capable of, of getting yeah. a call up. And, like, Do you think you could have done anything, anything better on the yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I think over the course of my career, you know, my personal problems are well documented. Um, and if I would have not gone down that road and been more dedicated, because there were times in my career where I wasn't as dedicated as I should have been, then I, I think I'd have definitely probably got it. So that's why it's regret, you know. That, that's just, just the plain truth of it all. Uh, so, I mean, success at the end of that season as well, your first season, you got into the playoffs. Mm. Um, I'm right saying it was Ipswich. Ipswich, yeah, we got beat 1 0 in the first leg and, and um, at the second leg. and. And still to this day, say, say to me, it's one of the best ever atmospheres they've witnessed at Upton Park. So these were a decent side at the time. Um, we, we played them the next year in, in the semi final as well. They were the side, it's obviously just when you were there as well. But um, Jim McGill and the likes, you know, they, they, they were a solid championship team. Um, and just the atmosphere, and it was a, like a balmy evening, May evening. Um, it's nothing there. It, honestly, just going to the grounds, yeah. the, the streets were lined with supporters. Um, and these like these West Ham fans, when they want to turn it on, they turn it on properly. And um, there was just a sense of expectation in, in the stadium. Um, and yeah, it was it was a special night to say the least. So this this goal we're going to watch here. It's got a mm. corner there. I yeah, I can't tell. Carrick's on the ball. Yeah. Carrick on the yeah. ball. Not yeah. bad player. Not bad player. So, <laughs> but no. to go. No. so he's popped it out to you. Yeah. And let's have a look at this. You do the rest. Was, it, was this a one nil down still, or was this? This, this is nil nil in the game. Nil in the game. Half nil down. Um, half hour ago, so the fans are starting to get a bit switchy. Um, and this wasn't worked on. Oh, no, that's one thing I will say. It's hard to get any credit for this. <laughs> <laughs> How good Michael Carrick was. He just seen me, and I've, I've just drifted out. For some reason, yeah. cannot tell you why. I've just drifted it's out. Fate. It's actually it's fate. And it's a, it's a feeling you get yeah. in the game, and you don't think good players get that. Right? Yeah, I've got to do something different. Exactly. And, and we we had loads of corners. We we're piling on the pressure, and we weren't getting anywhere with it. You know, they had the freeze a centre half. Yeah, they were um, just dealing with it. They they were dealing with it comfortably. So. You know, I thought we had to try something different, and this way to pass here from from so Mickey Carrick, Pops, yeah, it's beautiful, perfect. It's beautiful. And if anything, my touch oh. a little bit, little bit to the side. What a strike! No. As soon as it left my foot, you got to know. I, I know straight away, and I can't. You know, the feeling Let's I got go from that, that goal is just. I'll pause that. Just on Mickey's. So he's passed. Look at that. It's 
perfect. Bang in your path. It's absolutely perfect. Bang perfect. perfect. Talk about weight of pass. Yeah. Okay, that, that's took your first and piece. He's, he's probably it a little bit as well because yeah. he's coming running out thinking that we're going we're gonna to play short the eyes one. As well. Exactly. It's half to give it the eyes as well. Um, and like I say, my first touch isn't great, but I think it enables me to get the shot off because yeah. he's coming yeah, in so absolutely. quickly. I think you're right. Yeah, so you're, you want to be driving in the box, really. Yeah, 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 a little, little bit more be... diagonally, not straight across me, but it worked out well in the end. But, but from that, you know, the, I mean, look at that, that's left your foot there. The, the strike, going, just... that, that is, you, there's a sort of, there's a corridor yeah. through there. That, that's the only way you can hit, is the yeah. top bin through that corridor. Sort of three, someone blocking you, three players in line, the keeper's a bit on the side, he's exactly, just left that yeah. area open there. Go on, let's have a look at that here. Oh. He just don't save them, I'm afraid. He don't save them. And he was very good, Kelvin. Yeah, he was a well very good keeper. keeper. This game under the season after his exit. Yeah, he, he was just one of, the, one of the best feelings I've ever had in the football field, to be honest with you. Yeah, sure. Um, so. A bit of back <laughs> best, but, um, Yeah, it, just an unbelievable night. And then Christian Daly gets the second. So you, you had the corner, had the corner well for the second, um, put it straight in his head. Straight in, straight in, yeah. And, um, Did that have a little, that, that drop down? And then, dropped down, and then, I think it, um, hit him in the private area as well because um, he, he was down for a while. I don't know. I think he controlled it that way. It bounced Did to him or that, something, but I can't I, remember vividly. I've not got that on this. Yeah, like, yeah, but, yeah. Just have a little look at it, but yeah, and he just poked it in in the end. I think, but we were well deserved winners of that game. We were the better team on the night, and again, the celebrations afterwards were fantastic. Just a shame that we performed so badly in the final. Well, against I, Palace. I was going to just going to touch on that. I mean, so after the euphoria of that getting through the semis. Mm. Excuse me, you want to get to that final. And yeah. Was that that being the millennium as well, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. And that was a 1 0. 1 0. Lost in the league last minute. They shot in there, Stevie Byer. Yeah, he, he didn't really spill it. It was a, hot, it was a tough one. Got one not enough me. pace out there. No, but all you, <laughs> all you outfield players and critics on goalies anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it was a tough one point. Not enough pace out to get wide. And he just wanted to cling it. But. Yeah. So yeah, that was a shame. Really and, and there was so much expectation again yeah. after that performance in the semi final. Um, real shame, and that, that took some getting over that bit. Well, I thought, because I was watching it, and I'd spoke to Pods a few weeks later, because I was leaving Warsaw, and obviously I had a couple of couple offers around that time. The main one was West Ham, because I was desperately going there. It was such a great set, mm. such a big club. I played there, the fans were there turning it on, mm. the atmosphere is electric, so mm. I wanted to kind of sample that. So I didn't know if I wanted just to win or lose, to be honest, because the pod has not said if I go to the Prem, right, okay. he's going to take me if we, or if we're in the Champions, he's going to take me. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping it was both, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm cheering on. I remember speaking to Pods two, I went down to meet him actually in Essex two, three days later, and he was so low. He was so low. And I think while I was in the house actually speaking to him and just get to know him and get the mm. feel for him, you came on the phone. And, at that time, he's thinking, I could hear his voice and he was speaking to Barry Neville, his agent, we have, we have to keep him, whatever we do, we have to keep him. And uh, was there any thought in your mind there going out? So you didn't go, oh, because I mean, you just, you deserved it at that stage to go on Yeah, um, there were a few offers, I'm not going to lie, but I, I, that playoff final defeat hurt me more, not, not, I want to say more than the cup final, two cup final defeats that I had, but it was, it was very, very close. Like, it, it, the club, so you know, everyone knows it. The club's a Premier League football club, and the way the fan turned out in the semi-finals and the final, you just look around and you're thinking, this, this club cannot lose this game yeah. today, you know. Which made the following year in the final against Preston even more yeah, pressure. I don't know what would have happened to the club if they lost that game. <laughs> well, that's, that, I mean, that was a thing at the time. Mm. There was a lot of talk about administrations and mm. stuff. So I mean. He, I'm not getting ahead of it because we'll talk yeah. about the season, but he on the final, didn't it? Did, we, yeah. As much as you want to keep it away from your players, mm. everyone knew. Everyone knew. Yeah. Fans knew, come on, we've got to do it. Exactly. I mean, it. So, I mean, I think when the team we had there it was decent sort of thrived on yeah. it as well. There was some good characters in there, weren't there? And, and it was just, I think it was just coming together nicely, that team at that time. I think maybe the year before was a little bit too early, so I think Pars made some good signings. And he did year. because I can remember going in the change room mm. to start with the pre season. Mm. I think you had a little bit extra time off yeah. because you played in the playoffs and there were some good lads in there already. I always remember him talking about Noble, mm. Chrissy Cohen, who's going to be two mm. good lads for us. Mm. My mate Rufus Brevitt was in there, mm. although we weren't mate at the time, I didn't like him. I got to like him during that year. That's another, that's another story. <laughs> but like, there was already some good lads in there, and then yeah. we thought, well, it's a Playoff boys come back as well. We've got real chance. I'm thinking mm. I've got real chance here. I need to start the season and start playing with you boys. Yeah. 
But like in the change room, there was Nicky Carrick, who was going. Yeah. You had David Connolly, you had uh, Kevin Horlock, you had, there was a lot of players. I mean, Chris today, Donald Chinson. Yeah. Uh, these, they, there was like a lot of money. And the club was really, I think, seven part was like, you've got to get a few. He bought Teddy in that year as well, didn't he? He bought Teddy, this is what I'm saying. So he, he, he ended up getting rid of, I think, well, not getting rid of, he sold Nicky Carrick, who yeah. was going to play in the Premier, obviously, and deserved to be. I think Connolly went, I think Kev Horlock went. Some lads on the big, on the big money managed to get out. I thought where Paz was clever, I don't think you could get quite get like your Repkas out or your, yeah. your Don Hutchinsons and Christy Dave because they had so much money, no one had probably taken for that money anywhere else. Yeah. I think he sort of bought them in, yeah. kept them together, and then added personalities like Teddy to it. I mean, I, I remember sitting, I've been at Warsaw for 11 years, and then I'm sat next to Sheridan. <laughs> I'm like, ah, that's what I came for. I'm like, Teddy, dude, mate. You know what I mean? But that, that change was brilliant, and I think. I remember right, pods, because there was two rooms in the change rooms the year before, so there's a bit of a divide. Yeah. He'd knocked all that out, through. opened it all up, knocked yeah. it through, opened it up. The canteen was a little bit different where everyone had to speak to each other, and I think yeah. it just made everyone like get together, sort of. Definitely. Thing. Yeah, it was a good group. And it was a real good yeah. one. It was a great group. I mean, I love that. That's one of my probably my favourite years in football. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. When you get a bit of success at the end. Exactly. And then the, the following year as well, I don't want to go ahead of ourselves, but the, the final when you finish seventh in the league, you know. Oh, them two, three years mm. was sensational, yeah. weren't they? I mean, so we're going, I mean, it, funny enough, after the end of the season, I mean, sort of run through the season, we thought at one point we're going to miss out here. Yeah. The same as season four. It, you know, everyone talks about it, but the championship is a tough, it's relentless. Tough, really you tough. Know, I was hearing Steve Bruce talk about it um, this morning. I was in the car and he was saying, you're off it for one game, like they were last night against QPR. He said, this league is relentless yeah. and it'll catch up on you. Yeah. Villa are flying at the minute, but you know, that's just, that is the whole nature of that league. And that's what it was with us. I think we struggled for some reason, and I don't think it was a fitness issue, but we struggled with the three games in a week, nearly yeah. every week. And uh, maybe it was part not rotating properly, properly or injuries I'm not too sure but I, I found it tough personally you get back you, then you get promoted to the Premier League it's once a week you're like oh, yeah absolutely lovely. absolutely then you can get your momentum exactly. Exactly. it is a fine line to, to, like you say about rotating and resting players because you want to have a run as a player yeah and you want continuity you want, con- you? Gosh, you, do. you want to get that momentum yeah. going you yeah. need games to play that so if you are left out then for a couple or thrown back in yeah Sometimes you can't get it, so I suppose it's, it's a real learning curve it for a manager as well. I think yeah. parts by the end, we've more or less had a settled team by yeah. the end. I think we were sort of mid-table looking to miss out. And went, for, went on a run, didn't we? Went on a run for the last 17. I mean, Elk has parts stuck me in. I'm not just saying that for me, like that. <laughs> Definitely Elk, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. But uh, we had 17 on the spin and went from there and, and managed to sneak it on the last day. Exactly, I think yeah. we walked for the way. And, yeah. and from then, I just got the feeling we was... We were going to win it. I know there was so much pressure on us. Yeah. No, I did. It was, just it, was, real, it, was, it was in that now or never moment, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I, it I just think everyone, and I don't think it, every playoff final matters, don't get me wrong, but I think it mattered more to us than it did to Preston. I think that told massive. eventually. I think it is. I think yeah. you're right, yeah. It was massive. It was mm. massive for the club. And yeah. To actually to do it. Was, yeah. To be part of that was, was incredible. But I mean, now we had Ipswich again in the semis yeah. that year. So you Bobby and Marlon before. turned it on in that game, I remember. That, that was, I mean, what a game. That was, I mean, I still put that down as the best atmosphere. I know you spoke about it the year yeah. before, you know, that atmosphere and that after Saturday afternoon was... I've never felt anything like it. I actually, a picture now and the hairs on the back yeah, of the neck still stand up and I'm just going to the side of the goal and sticking your towel and your spare gloves at the side and just seeing the crowd sort of matching. Yeah. It was, it was, it was... It was Do miss that place, to be fair. I miss it massively. Yeah. I don't know, uh, in, I can't ask you about that later as well. I have mm. to ask you about that later. But, and that, that was, that was I've, I've never experienced an atmosphere like it. No. And I, I, I don't say I know I can again. No. It, was, no. it was incredible. We've got the, uh, we've got the Ipswich semis because you had a big part to play in that. Because I always remember, I'm not just saying it as really as well, whenever you played well, or usually when you play, because you play well most games to be fair, we played well. Mm. It was one of them, so it must have been hard for Paul to leave you out at times. And yeah. Just sort no, of yeah. Not get the rotation. Yeah, I, I always, I always, like, and this is again, this is nothing, but I, I always felt that responsibility in most teams I played, and even when I first went to Stoke, um, me and James Beatty, when we played well, the team just more often than not played well and won the game. 
Um, and that's it was, it was the case. That's a big part, and you think of that. You know, all I remember is you going up and down that way. Yeah, I could have, I could have affect the game when I was playing well. I could affect the game. We could get up behind you, yeah. and we were yeah. all solid behind you, and yeah. you're going out there and you're creating chances. We always felt like I was going to score as well. Mm. Yeah, no, 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 good years, no good years. Oh, brilliant. Well, I've got the Ipswich semi. So all I'm going to say is I, I must get an assist here. Great pass back from Anton. Great, I, found, I picked someone out there. And Bobby does excellent. See that goes a straight out to you. Ah, oh, that's fascinating. I mean, that's what I just speak about. You going down, just getting yards, yeah. driving into the box. Hey, the atmosphere. Yeah, it's just done really well. Yeah, Bobby's done really well there. Done well. Got a little yeah. touch on it. You're just driving. I'm, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm trying to get across him. Do you know what I mean? And then. <laughs> I mean, that's brilliant. Yeah, you've got yeah. all the way in there. I think the, keeper, Do you, the keeper's... Oh, I've got to read me there if I'm being Because <laughs> I can't score it. Like, you know, it's a half finish at the near post. It, it maybe got a shuffle to the left a little bit more, but you're the goalkeeper coach, mate, so I'll leave Like I said, here. a lot of critiques <laughs> out of players. Got, but, I, yeah, I, can, I, I do get that. I think that I'm looking at it. All of my had a little foul on yeah. one of the central yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, a little bundle and got away with yeah, that. But. Yeah. No, it, listen, it was brilliant from Bobby. Um, and... Yeah, I, I've, I've got some violin. That's what I like to do. Like I, I was, I was never one for putting it into areas. I was, I always wanted to find my man. Did you? I was yeah. more actually, I've got that as a question more later on as well. Yeah, yeah. So, because uh, would you drive so far and then have a little look up and find someone, get away from the defender, or would you know where he was instinctively? Well, the, the clips that we've got, like, there's one here where I've got to the byline. There's the BT cross I put in against Man City. I've got to the by, byline and the. Uh, Bobby's more ago on the playoff yeah. one. I'm driving towards the byline. I'm looking for them. I'm yeah. not looking for an area. Are you looking as you're going? Yeah. Are you looking I'm as you're look, going? And I'm going, going it in. Yeah. yeah. And that's great. We can um, that. You know, don't get me wrong. But there is there is a time for, and a place for putting it into areas. If you get a half a yard and you fall back and you can just whip one. Yeah. But more often than not, I like to drive to the byline and pick someone yeah. out. That was that was the way I played. We were fantastic there. It was more than just slipped that in. That was a brilliant thing. That goal going on here. This is the second we went to in look at this, didn't we? Did you? Yeah. The lovely little park. You found a lovely bit of space there. And you're yeah. already on your bike there, aren't you? Yeah. As soon exactly. as you see that guy in there. I, I just want to stretch team. I want yeah. to stretch my full back because what, the last thing he wants to do is go there. No, absolutely You not. know, he don't want to be running back towards his own. He don't want to be chasing you there, does he? No. Come on then. Yeah, you've done him. You've done him. I can see you look up there as well. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I used to do. So I, as soon as you as soon as you've got that yard on him yeah. and you know he can't get back tackling you, yeah. you're having a little look at where he find is. It. And you've the defender's got in front of him, but luckily enough he's spilled his main to, to Bobby. But you put the balls in them areas like yeah. that. Defenders have got to go and attack it, they yeah. leave spaces behind. And that was brilliant. And that was too much what was was sensational. Yeah. Man. Now they, you know, they, they, I mean, they paid us back in the end. I didn't call myself in glory on a couple of. On a couple I can't of, remember them, mate. Nah, I've, I've left them. It was unlucky, really unlucky. <laughs> but a 2 2, and I can remember I was getting a bit sticky in the press, actually, off Kamara, especially. Sure. Yeah, and my old goalie coach, Mick Kearns, spoke just at the right time because I was really getting pumped up for the game. I'm thinking, right, I'm having this, and I was probably. With everything, I wanted to win it with a group of players we had because it was a, such a good group. Yeah. Right? Such a tight exactly. group. And I was, I, was proper, I was probably over pumped. And Mick Kearns, my old goalie coach at Warsaw for years and sort of mentor, he's ran. I was actually on the bus, I wasn't going to answer it. I'm glad I did because he just said, listen, settle down. Don't listen to you. Please don't tell me you've listened to anything they've said. You know you deserve to be there. Just go and play. And I thought, that's... It's an art in itself is not listening to the outside media when you're a player. I think so. Because it can affect you. It can affect you in a positive way at times, but it can also really knock your confidence. Yeah. And, and that's something I found towards the end of my career is... is just not listening to it. Turn the radio off on the way home. Yeah. Little things like that, you know. You've got all the phone-ins. Exactly. They yeah. phone in and they go have an opinion on it yeah. and it's, it's got a voice, everyone yeah. can hear it. It's not just, I mean, that, back in the day, it was just the papers. So yeah. you could, I could leave the paper. But mm -hmm. now you're on social media, it's everywhere, isn't it? It's, so it's hard to avoid, don't get me yeah. wrong, but. You've got to be a strong character. Yeah. You have, yeah. You've got to be a strong character. Or if you're not, Finish. Don't look. Yeah. Finish. Well, don't look at it. Just yeah. don't look at it. Yeah. I always remember Nigel Rio Coke at West Ham. We said to him for so long, the older lads in the change room, stop reading the press, stop doing nothing, just you're playing really well, we'll just keep doing that. And I think my outside interests and they, they really swayed him from that, which was a real shame because he, 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 yeah. he was playing really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the Preston final. So, I mean, 
So we took to up to Port and we went to Bottom Road, like I said there. Yeah. And that was, we was, we was really good then. We were, yeah, very good. It was really, very good. 2 0 win, really, yeah. we made it comfy. Yeah. We made it comfy. The atmosphere there, all the West Ham along the, the back there. Was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Night it was incredible. And, uh, you know, we had the hoodoo over them at that time. Yeah, didn't we? Because I think they finished like about 17, 18 points ahead of us. They were third, weren't they? Yeah. They were third. They just missed out, out 17, yeah. 18 points, or maybe even four. And, you know, they were sick of the sight of us by the end of the playoff game. It wasn't the end of that one, we were celebrating. Yeah, four, but yeah, exactly. I mean, that was incredible. I remember, I remember celebrating after, but everyone, we was all going, right, hey, listen, job to be done. We're not going to go over the top here. Mm. And we were, because we loved, we, we did like celebrating that group as well. We did, yeah. We worked hard. And that's probably one things. thing that helped us, because the year before, we did celebrate. Right. You know, yeah. and, and maybe we thought we were already there. Yeah. Whereas this this time, yeah. it was like, well, kind of, yeah. it was very noticeable even for me, like, because yeah. I'm celebrating, but I'm, t- I'm actually thinking, right, come on, we've got a big game yeah. winning. Yeah. Remember yourself. So that experience from the last year is such yeah. a good start. Oh, definitely. We had Teddy there, and, yeah. and you know, players like, right, listen, brilliant, enjoy it. Right. Yeah. There's a job to do. Yeah. There's a job to do, and we yeah. said, we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate after that, which we did, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 definitely. So again, so in the playoff final, I mean, such a big stage. I remember the atmosphere was, was incredible, really. Like, nothing I've ever... Up to part was incredible because it was so passionate and yeah. so exciting. And the airs in the back of the So this was just noise. I mean, you played there the year before mm. and, and must have, that must have, again, stood you in good stead for it. But it was my first time, I've so It's like nothing I've ever played in before. Yeah. Um, yeah. A wall of noise. Yeah, it was, it was sensational. And as I said previously, there was... A huge air of expectation from the West Ham fans for that game. It was now or never. It was, it was. And, um, it was do or die, wasn't it? it yeah, was. it was, it really was. And um, yeah, just, I just remember uh, the ball coming to me and just taking out, again, taking out my feet and trying to take the defender out of the game and again looking up. And Bobby's just checked off, I think it's. Um, I can't remember the centre last name. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm sorry. I can see um, it. Picture, and picture. He's just come off him a little bit, and it's like he's it's in the air, but I've half cut it back. And to be fair, it was a very good finish. It's a great finish. Probably had a cut. I mean, the finish in the Ipswich. Yeah, in the seventh was excellent exactly, as well. Yeah. He really come up, steps up there. Definitely, and towards the end yeah, of that season, see the scenes yeah. afterwards. I mean, and, you know, it was yeah, when that went in. Was, yeah, it was, was, and I think everyone knew then we ain't getting yeah. this up. No, no, no there's no way it was no. Either. No. no, even when my knees collapsed on me, yeah, exactly. it got blown up. There was no, yeah. even then, by waters come on with two weeks running out the changing rooms. <laughs> you were staying in those no, 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 no. This is sat in that. I, I was watching on a tiny TV screen with, I mean, old man had made his way down from the stands, and I was on a little on a physio bed with my knee out here with big yeah. bandage on. Johnny Green came in to celebrate with me, and I see all the lads on the screen. I went, ah, John, get me out, mate. But people were struck me on that, so that was that. Ludo came out on his shoulders. I think you know, good times, it was, real good times. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. And to do it, for, I always said to do it for them fans. It was brilliant. Yeah. With that group of lads and the staff, even round the place, the kit men, Pete and Eddie, and Shirley and the team, yeah. and everyone involved just pulled together. They did. That year. So it to do it a, on yeah. a pitch for everyone. It was, was a collective was, effort, definitely. And you're right in saying the people, even at the training ground, like yeah. Shirley, Anita, yeah. um, Pards, um, PA, and you know, just it, the chef, Tim. Yeah. Um, it, it was just it was all you. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was just it was, a good, it was a good place to be. Yeah. To be honest, it, it was. And when it's like that, usually good things yeah, happen. Exactly. So, you know, it's a lot of has got to go down to Pards for Crane. I think so. In the club. Yeah, that's what we spoke about mm-hmm. at the start of that mm-hmm. day, wasn't it? Where you know, he's, he's knocked a few rooms about and yeah. got everyone together and exactly. the canteen's changed so everyone's together and yeah. no one's segregated and separated. Yeah. So it worked, it worked brilliant. So I mean, so you, I mean, you had, you had another, we had another few great years there. I mean, this, the, the following year was, the FA Cup final was sensational, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. The run up to that as well and the court finals of that and the semis. The semis, yeah. I mean, that was, that was in, I mean, that, that don't get any better than them two years, really. I know it doesn't, no. no, it doesn't. It, they were, we were a good team. We were developing into a really good team. And then when we went to the Premier League, we had players that hadn't really played at that level, or including myself, who had something to prove. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm thinking of myself, um, thinking about Bobby, Nigel Rio Coker, Marlon, yourself, so, um, you know, Anton, yeah, Gabs. Yeah, it was desperate to play. You know, desperate um, to play. It, 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 you, I'm, 
you know, during the whole season, you know, we started off like a house on fire. Yeah, man, we had yeah. Blackburn at home comfortably, all the villa. I think there was a villa at home. Yeah, and then was, Blackburn maybe just yeah, after that. Yeah, it was. You know, we were four in one and scored a hat-trick. Yeah, we were, we, were, we were a good young team. Yeah. Hungry, you know, hungry. Yeah, exactly. Hungry to do well yeah. at that level. Yeah. Points to prove. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, and we, we were we were a fit team as well. We were explosive. Yeah, um, we had a lot of legs. A lot of legs. Yossi uh, in that time as well on the right. Who I think me and Yossi complemented each other really well. Yossi was more of a technical player. He, he was manipulating. Really, yeah, he was top really, really good in high spaces. It. Whereas I just like to get me on my fullback. Yeah. That was my main well, that was objective. Imagine stretching that exactly. side. Exactly. He can come inside. Yeah, he, and he was a, he was a brilliant footballer. Yossi. He was. Really. Um, so again, another good signing from Paz. Um, Anton and Gabs with the a really good relationship at the back. Teddy was, was Teddy, you know, he still had Bobby and Marlon there. He was a decent guy. It was really yeah. good. Nigel Rio is probably his best years of his he career was, as well. And he, that's why I was saying, if yeah. he'd been able to keep focused just yeah. on his footy. And constantly, I mean, constantly admit. Constantly, I always said it's, it's, it's still one of the, it's probably the best partnership I've had in the football field with Constantly. Really? He, was, he was a really intelligent player. He had a great left foot on him for a start. But, Used to drive me mad sometimes playing with fullbacks that used to overlap me when I'm one on one. That was I. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes managers want want to do it. And you see, you know the way. You may say you play, for example, the, the fullbacks are constantly yeah. going. For me, when I'm one on one with my fullback, leave me alone. Yeah. It's my job Absolutely. to get, get the better of him, get that ball and get the ball in the box. But if you're if my fullbacks are overlapping, he's bringing another player into the equation. Absolutely. And it used to drive me mad. That was my own personal yeah. hate that I had. You'd probably say, you know, you know you to type of players. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. if Yossi is coming inside, exactly. then you want you the fullback. Go, then you want the fullback. Exactly. Right. But if you've got the ice on the outside, you'd be like, well, you don't bring him to me. <laughs> exactly. I want to be him. And I'm exactly. Like, but that's what I'm saying about Conch. Conch knew. So he was clever. He was clever. Whereas I played. Because he had the pace to do it. He did, yeah. yeah. And I've played with fullbacks before that. I want to go down the outside or I'm going down the outside and they're next to me and I'm thinking, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> when I did go inside, that's when Conch went. He knew when to go and not yeah. to go and he knew when to give me the ball. We just had a really good understanding. We didn't talk about it. We didn't work on it. Just, it's, it's just, just, it just happened. Brain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he, he, was a, he was a really good fullback on it. Yeah, I mean, really Man City briefly, I know when they when they are high, the fullbacks do tend to leave them a little bit. Yeah, they do, yeah. It's just when true. they do yeah. come inside, then yeah. that's the time they, they go. go. So yeah. we was well ahead of us. So we used to be well ahead of us. We'll give him Pards any credit for that. <laughs> Maybe. At least he put a really good side again. Yeah. He did, yeah. We had a good, young, hungry team, I think. You know, hungry being the, the, probably the most relevant word, but we had, we had some ability some in there. Ability. Well. There was, there was yeah. a lot of ability in there. So, I mean, for the, I can always remember, I mean, the FA Cup final was like, would have been there, because we finished about six or seven. Yeah, no, we were well. really good. Yeah. To the top, we was well in the top ten. Mm. So, to, to FA Cup final, and I got back for that, I've been, I've been watching it, so I could see how well you were doing. I was just desperate to get back playing. Yeah. I mean, Ian, fortunately, I got back fit by the end of that season, which was great, and involved in the Cup final was amazing. I always remember you sat on the bench next to me with like a minute to go. Yeah, I mean, look, if, I, 83 minutes, I can't. Two minutes, and we've got. Gerard's so like, down. Yeah, I still beat you now. It's like okay. I, 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 I'm going through it and I'm trying to. What year was that? That's never that long ago. Mm-hmm. But it's so long ago, but it feels like like yesterday. Yeah. It feels like a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. maximum. Because I'm still living it. Something when I'm talking to you now. You see, it hurts. Picture on the bench, doesn't it? You know, because <laughs> we were sat next to show going, "This is this is massive." Yeah. Gerard's down. Yeah. Come on, how long left? And the only reason he hit the, that ball and, at that time was because he had cramp. Yeah, he had cramp. Couldn't move with it. Couldn't move. But he hit it, and that's. I do say that day. I mean, that was that was my game blow down. <laughs> <It was. laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I know, and we all have regrets. Yeah. And my my biggest surprise not playing me like I understood him playing Shaka. I did because Shaka been excellent all season, playing every round. But yeah. I just felt it was fate, and that moment there was was the moment was the moment where yeah. my knee had been out for ten months is redeemed. And yeah. I don't know. You never know. Yeah. And we'll, we'll never know. That's now, why. Will we? That's but, why it's such a, it's an amazing game. Really. Exactly. It's an amazing. And but you know. In, in that final, we were sensational. Really good, you know. Really uh, good. And probably the killer blow. We've gone up two new up early, obviously. Um, it, it's get them getting that goal. I think it was Cisco just before half time. Yeah, I think it was. Um, cross, yeah. And if we'd have gone in two 0 yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. You know, it's okay, it's Liverpool, and they, they've done it plenty of times. But see, I even remember that time in the changing room, we were around each other. And yeah, we were still all right. Let's not carried away. Job yeah. to do. Yeah, excited, but. Yeah. Job, then we actually believed we were doing and it was 
that close. And, and the two finals I played in, um, yeah. obviously the West Ham Liverpool one, the Stoke Man City one. West Ham Liverpool one, we des- I think we deserve to win that game. You know, Definitely. ultimately a world class player stopped us from doing it. The Stoke Man City game, we were poor on the day, we didn't turn up. Yeah. So you hold your hands up yeah. there. But that Liverpool one hurts because it, we we were so close. Yeah, it really smart, so. Honestly, I remember on the bench, so that next year, yeah. I'm around each other going, yeah. it's going to last come on. And then he scores a wheel, we almost slid down the chair, right. onto the floor of the dugout, right. devastated. But then, you've got to go again, yeah, wouldn't it, yeah. hold on, it's extra time, you know, yeah. and we actually picked ourselves up really well. did, yeah. Ireland had a good chance, his ankle was knackered at that that's time, right, but right. he had a chance where he got to plant that ankle, yeah, I think, to hit right. that shot, and his that. ankle's just skewed it. it. And he, he, pr- he puts that away. Yeah, he, he normally that away, does, yeah. Think. yeah, he does. Yeah. But yeah, uh, an amazing time, amazing yeah. time, loved every minute of it. Yeah. Great years, and then, well, I mean, a couple of look at you. Had, there was a few other games after that. Was then that was you know you had just a couple of great games against Arsenal. Yeah, I remember that. That's one I've just wrote down. And I was trying to think of the bigger games and odds and Wenger having a little yeah, show. Which was yeah. on the side, which was excellent. But yeah, that was uh, was that your goal? Did you, did you score in that one? No, I had. Uh, that's it. My one's winner. I've I've got the ball of Flamini. I think it was, and then Teddy's just there, about five yards outside the box, and. The defender has gone, gone towards Teddy, which has helped me because he's thinking Teddy's got a bit of space, but Teddy's laid it back into my path as Teddy does. But if you look at the path from Teddy, it's the perfect way. I mean, yeah, yeah, that is look, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it. It's amazing. And then, that's, that's, the, that's you know, I mean, Marlon is making that Maybe one. See, that, that's more of an area one, to be honest with you. But yeah. I'm, I'm still looking at it. Yeah. I'm still seeing where it's going. Really there. You have a little glance. It's yeah, making exactly. it. I'll yeah. put it behind. Right. So you've been able to see your head. You've either checked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Which is a massive. That's why I think you know, people do go on areas. But I think you have just before you're about to deliver the ball. You have to have yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. You know. Some people, some people probably wouldn't want to or, or don't feel the need to. Again, areas. But in the- for me, quick look. What, what's the striker doing? Okay, he's running toward the middle or goal. Just put it in behind them. If he had checked, then I can still play. Still do. That's a massive ball. skill, isn't it? That's yeah. probably why you got so many assists yourself. Really. Yeah, that is. Why these lads love playing with us? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at the celebrations here as well. Look at them. Right. Look at the lads. Yeah. Hey, the crunch up there, Teddy. Yeah. Well, that's what's today, yeah, yeah. this is amazing time. Yeah. You probably don't appreciate it that time either, you know? No, I don't. How close we were. Yeah, you know, it is. So, the battle with Flamingo, no, yeah. that's not yours. Yeah, no. Look at this spot. You see the defender going there, drawing in, the play pass. Brilliant first yeah, time. Yeah, that's it. No, that's why we've still got to finish that. We've still got to finish it, but it's. You're doing well, very clever there with your legs. Yeah, just don't get in front of Great one, too. Great ball. Great. Good goal. Here we are. Yeah, we get off. I love to, do you know what? I love to see that passion. Yeah, exactly. It shouldn't escape, probably, but no. Two passionate managers going at it. Passionate on the pitch. Everyone's wanting to win. Definitely. Uh, it's brilliant. Great times. So, after. After West Ham, yeah. a few years in, and cracking years, and the Prem, sold to Stoke. Sold to Stoke. Zola come in, um, and it, it, was, it was a weird one um, with Zola. Lovely man. Steve Clark come in, again, uh, fantastic coach. Training was really good. Before that, Kerbishley, um, who we didn't see eye to eye. That was the blatant, honest truth. So did, in, the, in that time there, was you, you, you weren't... You'd, you'd have some great games. Yeah. You didn't feel. Like I, I was in out of teaming. Um, Curves brought in um, Lewis Balmorte, um, which I thought, all right, fair enough. You know, yeah. the competition's fine, but I, he brought him in for a reason. I thought, um, again, per, I had personal issues at the time, which weren't helping, and my, my form started to tail off now. So look, so Curves stayed, then Zola come in, Curves left the club. Um, again, like I said, Zola's training was brilliant, really. You know, innovative. Yeah. Uh, Steve Clark the same. Yeah. Still I remember I was there yeah. for the start of it. Yeah. I remember. Remember. I think the first training session. So I trained. Yeah. Myself. No, yeah. It's so like part of that. Came with us. No. You just shared your structures. I think the ball came in him. I think Lucas Neil Chopper wanted to leave a little bit on him. Just let him know I'm your captain. And he's like just chopped him that way and didn't green him one movement and we went. 
Ah, that, 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 come on, yeah. <laughs> it's too yeah. good. Yeah. It was ridiculous. It was, yeah. He, he was still sensational. And it, it, he warned to me that this is the. And again, talk about regrets. Uh, you know, some people say, oh, "I've got no regrets. I've got regrets about my career." And I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit. And I think if you can't admit those regrets, they eat you inside. Yeah. So you're better off airing them. A regret of mine, a massive regret of mine, is when Zola um, first comes to the football club. He liked me as a player. In fact, he really liked me, and he he put a lot of time into me. He um, he wanted to play number nine and two inverted wingers in the number ten position, just in not usually my game, but I was still you know a decent technical player, so I could play in tight spaces if needed. And he seen me in there, and he really liked me. Even I went, uh, we played Fulham away. I scored two, set Cole, Cole and Cole up for the um, for the third goal. We won. We played at home to Newcastle, scored again. He really liked me, but I had a back issue at that time. So he was big into his yoga. So he used to say to me, one on one session after training, me and you, we go in the big um, indoor hall, me and him, take him in there. (coughs) Excuse me. And because my mind wasn't in the right place at that time, I didn't want to do it. And I'll never forget it. We were training at the stadium for a game. And he said, Me and you are doing yoga sessions today. He said, You need it. And if you don't do it, I'm never going to ask you again. What did I do? I got in the car and went out. That's a massive regret of mine. And looking back on it now, you know, Premier League legend, a nice man to go with it as well, wanted to invest some time with me and I refused and just complete stupidity. I left about a month or two later. And that was just after that, was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? And I suppose we've, like you said, there are other issues going on. Yeah, you know, which we, yeah. I mean, we're not getting onto it. No, no. You've got your yeah, exactly. your book as well for all that, which might be, yeah. would be yeah. a good read. But there's some legal issues well. going on with that, but yeah, that is an amazing read. It's just trying to get it over the line. That's yeah. the problem. But yeah, I've, I've written. It. It's all been done. It's all been written by the, the ghostwriter, etc. Just trying to get the um, get it over the line. But it must be an incredible read, and I know because you've you've turned it around massively. Which I'm, I'm not condescending myself. I'm proud of you because I know how, how, how bad it was for yeah. you. But to have turned it around like you've done is is fantastic. And like if you can help, it, I mean, people reading the story. Exactly, like, that's the main objective. Yeah, yeah. that's the main objective. I've done um, an article in the Daily Mail because I'm not just trying to, you know, when I do speak about, it, I don't want to be on the, the radio talking about it or in newspapers constantly but if people ask me I'll tell them and I did an interview in the Daily Mail three four years ago now and just talking about gambling and I got a letter when I was at Stoke um, from a man who whose wife was just about to leave him because he, he had a massive gambling issue not an ex-player just some you know um, work class man and he said uh, my wife read this article she was just about to leave with the kids she read this article on, in the Daily Mail on Sunday and she said that she understood, or lips oh. understood a little bit more about gambling. So she decided not to leave me from reading that article. Wow. And I just thought, that's so powerful. That's powerful, isn't it? You know, that shows how much it's saving the fact. So this book, you know, it's not about me making money or anything like that. It's, it's solely about getting my story out there and trying to help other people. That is good. You know, it's not going to make me a fortune. I'm not, I'm not doing it for that reason. But I'm doing it to, to, to genuinely help like you other say, people. You help one person. Exactly. Like marriage. Like, imagine getting it more out there. Yeah. If it helps 10 people, it's yeah. amazing. If it helps two more people, exactly. it helps a thousand people. Yeah. Exactly. Going through similar what you've been through. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't it's pleasant. It wasn't, it wasn't a good time, you know. And um, like you said, Luckily, I've come out the other end of it now, and, and Next. everything's all right. So, uh, brilliant, mate. So, is it Pulis? Was Pulis signed yet? Pulis signed. Pulis yeah. signed. Pulis or Pulis? Pulis. Pulis, <laughs> mate. I don't know. I think but, it's Pulis. So he signed you. <coughs> yeah. Was that just to get away from West Ham? Was you no, I'm not happy going yeah. at the time, or yeah. any more? I needed to get out of London a little bit. West Ham were uh, ready for. Um, they were okay to let me go. Obviously, the whole thing with Zola. Yeah. We didn't fall out, me and Zola, but he was just he'd given up on me, basically. Right, right. Um, and Pulis come in, and Pulis said, I want you. They were bottom of the league at the time. Um, it, it was an infamous Paddy Power when he played out and going down. Right. Uh, yeah, they, 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 it was their first season back in the league, or in the league, in the Premier League, first ever season. Um, he signed me and beat in, in January. Um, and ultimately, you know, James B had a huge effect from January through to the end of the season. We we were safe with about four or five games to go in the end. That's incredible. Isn't it? Yeah. I do remember it. I remember mm-hmm. when I say so much. I mean, you beat it up there. It was really incredible. Cause yeah. Again, I knew it beats, you know, he wanted balls in the box. Well, and yeah. he thrived on it. Yeah. So, no, so you did, you consciously thought about who you who you playing with? Like, um, well, he told me he was signed. We were literally signed within days of each other. Really? Yeah. And he goes, we ain't scoring enough goals. 
I need you to, and I need you two to work together, and it's the way it worked out. And you had a, you know, a great partnership up there as well. I know you did. Yeah. We've got one. We've got one goal here. This is against Man City. Yeah. I think I'm right in this. I don't know if this is game. This is where I scored. It. This is one. I think it's this one. Yeah. It's this one. Yeah. Yeah, we've done it ten men in this game. Really, it's quite well. a memorable game. And, and this is a nil-nil. This is this is a nil-nil. Roy Delap's been sent off. Um, Mark Hughes, so manager. Goes, no wonder he's going to short throw it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's Otherwise, that's in the mixer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course it is. Um, Danny Pugh is playing left back at the time. Good lad. From his side, but Glenn Whelan, decent players. It's not going to start for Michael Richards there. Again, I've looked up. It's a great header. To be fair. Great ball, great ball. 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 So you've put, you've seen him in the box. Yeah, you've put he's it just pulled onto look. Wayne Bridge, the left back there. It's a fantastic header. He's an unbelievable header. Right above him. That's such a thing. What a goal that is. And we ended up hanging on because, you know, what a lovely ball. Because that's still on the bubble a little. Yeah. That's not, yeah. It's not flat on the floor. People no. don't understand how hard a skill that is, I suppose. Exactly. It's 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 Feel that. That's, all, that's exactly what it is, it's about feel. Is that Joe Arten goal as well? Joe Arten goal, yeah. yeah. Like yeah you can't blame the keeper for that one. Either you can't blame the goal for that one. Um, but yeah, <coughs> yeah no. so, we've also got this one here. This was against Man City. This is Man City. So you had it right, though, against Man City. Yeah. This is just a, this is the game. Yeah, we scored. This is the last minute, so I think it was two or one or one or. One or. So this got yeah, your draw, this got your up. point. Turn card, an unbelievable. Oh, I love heel. your back heel. Bash. Just drilled it bottom corner. So just to show you, not all about this. No, no, no. You know, you scored you know that's probably one thing I should have done is scored more than I did. I, you know, look at going back to my 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 record. I scored an okay amount of goals, but I, I felt like I, I could have scored more. I think that's because you was. Did you enjoy assisting? No, I did. More. I've seen it as a goal and assist, yes, personally. Yes. Well, it is now more, isn't it? Yeah. Even now, yeah. more everyone gets the assist. <clears> exactly, gets yeah. credit for yeah. it. Obviously, the thing you get from scoring a goal, but I got, I got a really good feeling from assisting goals as well. Because yeah. um, that ultimately was my job. It, okay, you got to chip in with, with, if you can, five, ten goals a season. But, yeah, um, yeah assisting was what my, yeah, my job was. Brilliant. So that's a great start to, to your Stoke career. Yeah. And you had how many, how many more years did you have? I had five and a half at Stoke and five and a half at West Ham, yeah. So you Stoke, real good time there. First yeah. season, stayed up comfortably in the end, yeah. when looked in real danger. Yeah. When was the cup final after that? Was that the following year or was that a couple of years down the uh, line? That was the, so I signed in uh, January 2009 in the 10-11 season. Um, it, it was. It was. Two, this was 2011. It was that 10 11 11. season. And I got um, lucky enough to get Player of the Year as well for that. Again, it goes back to I'd, I'd stopped gambling at that point. Something to prove. Something to prove in my first year at West Ham. Got right. You know, I, when right. I had something to so prove. You, when you was hungry. Yeah, hungry. That's definitely when, when I played my best football. And this game here, we were talking about the Ipswich semi-final game and the playoff final game. This game was right up there for me because we played two playoff finals at the Millennium Stadium yeah. the Cutafe Cup final against Liverpool at the Millennium Stadium yeah, yeah. it sounds really cliche but for me growing up the FA Cup final was the oh. end all yeah. and I used to remember the helicopters going over the team buses on the way to the, Incredible. the ground do you still remember, you remember that? yeah I used to watch yeah. it all I, I remember that you know playing at Wembley okay it was a semi-final and people, some people don't agree with the semi-finals but if you're a player playing you oh, don't care did. a job yeah, you know? absolutely um, and I scored the first goal lucky enough to get a man of the match as well and, and it was one of the best team performances I was ever part of we really? were 5-0 on the day <clears throat> and, and uh, really really good team performance I mean this this what we're watching just as you're coming out of the tunnel there this yeah. I think for me that's the being in the change room and the lads before the game yeah. and then coming out onto the pitch and then the raw is probably the thing I miss yeah. oh, probably the most yeah. to me yeah. look at it you don't get any better than this do you coming you don't out no and the Stoke fans are brilliant as well they're, they're, they're loud like they're, 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 they're loud they're loud they're loud they're loud again this was a real good group of lads um, a very good group of lads that all stuck together. Yeah. There was no prima donnas in this game, room, let me tell you. If someone stepped out of line, you were told straight they away. Proper control their own oh, yeah, the that belt. And that comes from the manager as well, with a certain respect, but um, good men. You know, you think of Felix, um, Hoof, um, you know, Johnny Walters, Rory Delap, great man. 
Um, good lads, really good. Yeah, so that, that, that's proper, proper players. Aren't proper players. Proper no, men. We weren't uh, the best on the eye. We, we got the job done. You know, this was the first well, there's goal. There's different ways of winning exactly. football matches, isn't there? Jermaine has not never win at the time. So yeah, you're on one side, yeah. Jermaine on the other, Jermaine yeah. on the other. It's just there you go. to me, yeah. There you go. I knew that again. I knew as soon as, as soon as I see it, it was in. And that is some feeling. Let me tell you, scoring the Wembley. I was... Um, yeah, that's incredible. I knew, I, it, strangely enough, I knew I was going to score that day. I don't really? know why. I just knew I was going to score. So um, I'd never seen you this far across. No, the manager was telling me against the box in that game. Right. He said, Jermaine on the other right. side who could whip the great so ball in. Look at that. Look at it, that. It's, it's one of them where the ball's not really moved after I've hit it. Yeah, it's just stay there. Stay struck, round the back of the defender. Yeah. Goal, he's got no chance. And um, when Hoofy scored a Rory's long throw. Again. That was a we- that was a weapon. Yeah, it was. Throw, wasn't it? I mean, and why we, not? If you've got if you've got that, why yeah, not use it? Exactly. Right. And we used to work in all the time. It, it, you know, everything went right for us. On that the is good, right? Because the centre half just smashed that from exactly. twenty five goals. <laughs> that could go. Uh-huh. That could go in. But Bolton, after this second goal went in, Bolton yeah. did not have a sniff. No. Like we were completely dominant in this game. Um, what a lovely feeling at Wembley as well. Yeah, exactly, to go, yeah. You can enjoy that even more. Fans still talk about it to this day. You know, it's not very often you win five 0 in the FA Cup semi final. Oh, so. And um, yeah, that was a good night after that one. I can imagine, mate. So yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was, it was a know, penance, didn't it? Is that? Penance, yeah. Again, talking about the combination of me and Yossi. It was a good combination of me and Jermaine yeah, as well. Pace there, you say, yeah. It? What a lovely pass. It was, uh, Don't get near him because he's going to no. do the flip. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Good again. Ken went on his day. Yeah, he was a handful. A bit like Marlon, an absolute handful. Yeah. Like you couldn't handle him when he was on. Yeah, really good team. And do you know what? Tony Pulis had us so well drilled. Um, it got a bit tedious working on it in training every day. Right. Would he do it every day in training? Yeah, every single day. Would he? And you? What? He'd just go on the. On the shape? On the shape, yeah. Every day. Didn't like you playing a father side on a Friday, just to get the ump. Did you really? Get in, you know, and the lads just want a little tea yeah, or you were a little sweat on, or didn't he, he was worried of injuries and. <clears throat> and he'd just go literally work on the shape. Yeah, what more often than not, day. boxes, shape, you might do the odds possession session yeah. or something like that where you, you know, want the. But no firings. Very, very, very rarely. And a lot of players, a lot of teams now just. Def- Fires, I know, I've been involved a lot, but I, I, I don't like them. No. I, I would, if my choice would be, I wouldn't do the final on a Friday. I was playing on a Saturday. Yeah. I, for that reason, I yeah. don't want to pick up a night. I feel good. Yeah, exactly. I felt, especially yeah. if I felt good. Yeah. yeah, that is the thing, I suppose. But, but then a lot of players wanted to go and get a sweat on another exactly, round yeah. and have a bit of contact. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's hard, hard, isn't it? It's a tough one. Yeah, it is. Keep everyone happy. But he, he had his drills to an inch of our lives. Really? You know, uh, to, and that is one thing I will say about playing under Tony Pulis. I love playing under him. Again, the manager that I wanted to play for. So underrated, I think. He's got a perception yeah. in this country of being a bit of a dinosaur and that. We, this team here, okay, we had the Roy let the lap throw and we did go longer more often than not um, when it was needed. But we had Kenwin Jones up front. We had me, me and Jermaine on the wing. So you get the second, knock down, you, the midfield push up right behind. Win it out wide, then do, he, he, said, he used to say in the final third, do what you want, express yeah, yourself. Yeah, express Exactly. Really. There was no you know, set up or what he wanted you to do passing wise in the final third, it was off the cuff. But up until that point, there was a structure behind it. Yeah. And I always say, I was never the best defensive winner. I learned how to be a good defensive winner Did for him because he wanted his wingers to do a drill and he wanted them to, to well, you put in a shift, shift and shift and him. And that, winger, that winger gets the, the winger on the opposition uh, team gets the ball you go up and double up you get yeah. inside your full back you know and, yeah. and don't get me wrong well, I, actually, I was doing over 12 and a half K a game most weeks I was just fitting over a bit yeah. but I felt good for it and although sometimes especially away from home we we used to have a guard team and we used to be on the front foot and we used to press and there was a there was a purpose behind the yeah. press and everyone knew what to do in that press and the team used to hate it. Away from home, we used to sit off a little bit too much and we struggled to pick up results. But on the whole, he'd done brilliant for that football club. Do you think then, if he'd changed that a little and pressed away from him, right, he might have got picked off on certain games? Yes. Yeah. Against the top teams, don't get me wrong, I don't think you can do it. No, it's or maybe It's hard. And do you know what? But I, my theory on it is, and maybe right, wrong, I don't know, I'm not saying I'm, I don't want to pull it, but 
if you if you're gonna get we would be we anyway by staying in. Yeah. And be exactly. Just do it. Just go and do that's it. What, that's what we said in the I mean, you hate when I hate playing you at Stoke. Yeah. The dimensions are no different away from no. home. The pictures may be a bit narrower. But that was, you know, we're talking a couple of yards. Yeah, a couple of yards. I mean, that's a couple of yards does make a difference. Maybe, maybe. yeah. But like, if you're that good at doing on the press and, that, and the teams hate playing you, it's what the lads used to say in the changing room after, um, after the game on the bus. I prefer to lose having a go. Why can't we do what we're doing at home? Mm. And teams have absolutely hated yeah. going to our place. They hate oh, it uh, with a passion. You, and, yeah. But then we go away from home and we sit off and we're going, why can't we do yeah, that away from home? Go did, you, did the players actually would that, would they say that to the manager? If you didn't follow the instructions, you wouldn't be the same. Right. He was that black or white, right. you know? Yeah. Um, At least you know where you stood. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, my theory is like, probably not as good teams yeah. you're going away to mm. if you're sitting off them anyway yeah. you're a little bit worried about them, how good they are on the ball yeah. so you're probably going to get a bit anyway yeah. staying in exactly. why, why don't you go and have a go and if you do lose that team you're probably going to lose anyway yeah. but at least you've lost having a right no, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. completely agree and then other teams you, you probably go you might go smash them yeah. Yeah. that you might have lost to sitting off yeah yeah, and that, that, that was that was the you know the conversation afterwards. Of, that's what we because we, we did struggle our way from horrendous. Yeah, I do mm. remember that. But like, I mean, what what a tough place to go over there. Yeah. Years. So you've had, I mean, you've had a you've had a fantastic time there. Yeah. Is that the last goal? Uh, that's the fourth. Is that fourth? Yeah. Johnny Waters gets two at the end. Um. And yeah. Just. Uh, I mean, it must have been it must have been an amazing feeling there. What? Who? Would, so you said that after that was Man City in the final. With Man City in the final, that was the turning point. Mancini, the manager, had the first trophy they'd won in okay, yeah. how many years? Yaya Torre. I do remember. Um, and yeah, just we didn't turn up on the day. I'd done my hamstring three weeks before, and uh, really bad against Wolves. Like near enough a complete rupture of my hamstring. How I played in this in the final, I never yeah. know. I'd done my ankle before the FA Cup final against. Um, uh, Liverpool. This place shouldn't have been size. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was a practice game of parts put on. Was it? Daily done me. In, in um, which one? The FA Cup final? Yeah. Was it? I, yeah. Can't oh, well, it. I was in a hyperbaric chamber for, for a good two, three weeks to get the bruising out. To get out of yeah. the And then for this, um, again, both managers asked me beforehand, do you want to play? Because I've barely trained leading up to cup finals. And how can you say no? I think I made the right decision in the Liverpool game. I felt fine. I had a decent yeah. game. The final. Um, against Man City again how can you say no but I wasn't right I wasn't right yeah, he's a real difficult you don't want to let anyone down do no. you? but I didn't let no one down but I just wasn't myself you know you know and um, but yeah lucky enough to play in two finals just a um, real Brilliant. shame that I lost both of them. yeah to be fair that, the set is now uh, as it went it's, yeah. it's almost as good as the yeah, well, yeah not, that was an unbelievable day don't get me wrong but that's something that lives in the memory forever and yeah. like you say yeah. the Stoke fans will be able to Oh God, yeah, yeah. and I buzz off that. Yeah. So, how did it finish at Stoke? Uh, Mark Hughes come in in his la- in my last season, his first, and just got the fit. He, he played me for the first few games. I didn't think he wanted to like, disrupt the, the makeup of the team. Yeah. Um, we were still so well drilled that he could probably just put us down there. Exactly. Did Tony get the? No, Tony left in the summer. Mutual. Um, the fans were getting a little bit perplexed with the football. Again, you look at their situation now. Yeah. Will you take it? <laughs> well, I, I, so I say, look at the clubs that he's lost, Crystal Palace, West Brom, that he's left, Crystal Palace and West Brom, so yeah. they're all, yeah. you know, they're, they're the bottom three clubs right now. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's solely down to him leaving the club, no. but they wouldn't be in that position no. if, if he was still there. The, I think that regimented football, I know you're saying, like, it's good to have that structure, I think. Yeah. And then if you've got players like yourself and yeah. players up yeah, top, of course you've got to play up there. Yeah, that's, 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 that's behind that's, it. That's a great way of doing it. I think, like say, away from home when you're rigid Definitely. and you're still... That was the problem. It's sort of... It can take you so far. Yeah. It'll keep you up, I yeah. think. So yeah. it depends what you want in the end. And I think yeah. once you've stayed up for a few years... You might kick on. Probably that's probably what, yeah, that's why the fans you know, wanted it. And I'm, I'm not saying... if Listen, if, if I eventually, further down the line, want to become a manager myself, I wouldn't play solely the way Tony Pulis plays. I wouldn't, because I'm an attacking player by nature. But I still took a lot from him defensively that I would use in yeah. my teams without doubt. Well, we'll, I mean, we'll get, I'll, I'm looking forward to getting onto that as well, about what a few chores. Yeah. Oh, so, so then you left, so yeah. did you retire then? I, I tried to get back in. Um, <laughs> there were a few offers lower league. My back was in real trouble. How old are you now? 
I'll take to Lincoln there. Yeah. 36. Come on. <laughs> can't do it, mate. <laughs> sorry. We've got Lock to be in the box. We yeah. just stand up for it. Lock to. I can't. I'm sorry. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I went. Uh, was that, I was trained that? with Sam Allardyce at yeah. West Ham. Oh, yeah, I remember. Because yeah. I, thought, I thought on the surface of it, I've not seen you a few times around that yeah. time. And Ginger, that was yeah, yeah. sitting there, and Nobs, obviously. Yeah. I'm thinking, what a signing you'd be. Yeah. Even if you got 15, 20 yeah, games. Yeah, the, the, I, don't, never, I was never going to start every week, but I trained with them uh, for the first 10 days. I've been doing a lot of like away from um, on my own and felt really fit, really sharp. I, I made sure that when I went somewhere, I was ready. Yeah. Um, looked really good in, in the keep balls and training and all that. And I said, you look really sharp. Played a practice game, which Sam was refereeing. They brought in some new players at that time, like um, Sacco, Zarate, Valencia, just come in. Who wanted everyone to get minutes in? I played. Um, played three thirty minutes. First thirty minutes done really well. Um, set up a couple of goals. Second 30 minutes did okay, but we were having long breaks in between. Right. And then break after the second 30 minutes, I just felt my back lock up. And then in the last 30 minutes, I was, I was in trouble. Like, right. I could barely run. Sam's seen it. Sam's not silly. Yeah. Sam's seen it two or three days later. And I was close. We, we'd been talking about um, yeah, I me um, may, maybe signing a contract, a year's contract. But I think in hindsight, it was probably the right decision. And, and, and Sam said, look, you're not quite the player you used to be. And he was right, to be honest with you. Um, and then I got invited to go to Millwall with Dean Holloway for a day, um, which obviously with my West Ham connection, I had to think a long and long hard about it. But I thought, do you know, even if I don't sign for them, at least I'm getting some training. Yes, yeah, and that's absolutely. Good. There's nothing like the training. You, you, yeah. you do whatever you like in the gym and exactly. you can't repli- quite replicate it, can you? No. And I trained with them for a day, but I was so far off it and my back was still hurting. Yeah, yeah. And I remember driving home fair old drive through the Blackwell Tunnel up towards Essex and um, I literally had to peel myself out of the car and I got out of that car and I thought do you know what yeah. this is it did you just know I knew yeah. but then you know could I have gone and played League 2 football maybe but I would have been in a lot of pain before and after games I think I could have if I have really really dedicated myself I think I could have got through 90 minutes here and there and and contributed to a team at that level um, for another couple of years but uh, I'm not sure whether yeah. I, I, I think I made what? the right decision because I mean I, I was very similar to you mm. when, but I went back to play Walsall after being at Spurs and, and I was the same I remember my dad coming to down for the weekend to see me boy and that and see us mm. and it was Monday morning again and I was walking down the stairs on a Monday morning because I had an extra day off because I needed it I was walking down the stairs like I was I was older than my old man. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my back's hurting, my glutes are big, and I'm a goalie. <laughs> I don't even run about. <laughs> you put something going around. It's hard, I'm going to start with that. <laughs> and I'm walking down the steps as if I'm like, older than my old man. And he went, you sure? And that's when I first started to think. But it's I think, hard though, isn't I think it, to no, make that decision? It's really hard because you don't want to let go. It's such a good time. You don't want to let it go. It's really tough, especially you're still young. Mm. I mean, I was late 30s. I was 33 at the time. That's, that's a good age, though, really. It's so the thing I always think because you know, when you get the, the best of everything inside of the best of everything in the Prem, Spurs, and you was on the Stoke, and you get the best treatment, the best pitchers, your best attack, you can probably get away with it higher up. Yeah. But you're probably not the player you was. Yeah. So you can't quite affect the games as much as you yeah. want. So yeah. if you're getting that treatment True. In, in Division 2, you probably, you've probably got 30 games out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But because of the, the budgets, etc., you can't have the same treatment. They've got right. everything at the best of the best. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, a, it's, hard, it's a real hard situation. My, 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 my missus is convinced I could have played in that couple of years, but she wasn't feeling what I'm feeling. <laughs> no, she would be back. No, no, exactly. Get out of the car. But, um, exactly. It, who knows? Maybe I could have, but I didn't, and you know, that's, that's it now. Yeah. So, I mean, I, that, just speaking of DNA, that's exactly what we was trying to do you know we say about you're getting the best things mm. so maybe it's a, a, a non-league player or something lower down wants to try and get to that level mm. they look and look at the site and pick something out of it that's really good or a coach can exactly, pick a couple yeah. of things out of yeah. it. that was the idea behind that really yeah, so yeah. you said about problems you had you wanted to help people this yeah. is on a totally different scale it's yeah, similar to that if anyone can help a few people who've done it yeah. brilliant yeah. so you've you've you made a decision. Did you speak to your missus and that about it? I did, and she said, "Don't do it." 
But I'll she wouldn't have that ass, that's why. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she does now. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> What did you think around that time? Did you think, right, well, if I do say it, what am I going to do? I mean, yeah, I, I, that is one, you know, I look at other players that have had, I, I wasn't really young when I retired, but I was still relatively young in football terms, especially these days. Yeah. Um, I've got other players that I've played with that have retired a lot younger. I think they had a plan going forward. I made my decision. I'm quite a compulsive person. Um, I made it just like that, really, without any thought about what's happening yeah. next. Um, which I, I regret big time and I wish I could just turn do you? Time. yeah do yeah I, what I do you think, think you do different would you just I, I, I've probably planned to I, I genuinely thought that I was going to play for another two or three years and that's when I started looking to what I'm going to do next yeah. um, but I retired then again so that's sort of decision now. on a whim yeah exactly and um, and I probably mentally wasn't ready for it and I'll be the first to admit it I struggled when I first retired. For the next year, I was, I wouldn't say in like a, a dark place, but I had no, I had no motivation to do anything with my life. What, what did you, what did you find difficult? This is, this is, I had this conversation the other day. Because mm. I've been fortunate, I, I went straight after I retired. I had a couple of months which I really enjoyed, not doing anything. Yeah, I had no same. structure. Yeah. But then I went straight to coaching. So mm. you, you've got that sort of structure. Yeah. You have to be there at a certain time. Yeah. Although you've got to prepare a little bit more for stuff and, and plan stuff yeah. extra for the play, just turn up, everything's yeah. done for you. You've got to yeah. be there at that time, yeah. be the best you can be. You've got to be there at that time, be the best you can be. Yeah. It's all structured. Yeah. They, they found it the really thing. hard. With no structure. No structure. And what, what, what do you do with you then? Exactly. I, I was the same through a few months. I loved it. I, I love not having that responsibility anymore, being at a certain place at a certain time. But it's all we know. Yeah. You know, that's all I've known is being somewhere at a certain time, playing on a Saturday, Hello, playing in midweek, um, going home, recovering, getting ready for the next game. And it, that was gone within a blink of an eye. That is it's quick gone. Well, it? yeah. It's gone. And I hadn't prepared myself for it. Yeah. And um, that would be one thing I would say to, to people you know, um, in the game is, is prepare yourself for so it. It, it. It hits you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Especially like, because that's what they say. So, I know they talk about the Canberra players, and, but do they get enough help when they come out of it? Mm. Like, I mean, you've, you've played 20 years, and all, mm. 18 years, and at the top level. Was there anyone there really to help you other than the family? There's not like really no network to go. I never had a phone call from my agent. I never had a phone call off anyone connected with the previous club I was at. Um, I'm not the PFA. Do you know what? I, I think there could be. I think there could be more that's done. Um, to help players because I don't know yeah, it's, yeah. yeah maybe maybe because it's hard, it'll be hard for the PFA or every club that's released a player to be calling them on a on a, any given moment saying you okay absolutely, absolutely. You, you maybe there's something that. you could call like a, the support network. yeah exactly yeah, maybe there, I it. definitely think there's room Easy for something for it, I know, like, yeah. but then again in football there's, there's so many egos and so much yeah. you know machoism that it's would you make that call? Would you I don't, don't, know. Know. I don't, I don't you know. It's one of the, it's one of them environments, isn't it? So yeah. it's hard. It's just left for you to deal with it, really. That's the way it is. It's just a harsh world. So, I mean, you did you've done bits of way I've heard you on the radio. Yeah, no, I, did, I, I went straight to our media work at the time, which I really enjoyed. Good. Um, but you know, there's only so much for you can do, and I do enjoy it. It's a completely different world to football, yeah. um, and it's a world that. I enjoy it when I'm on air and I'm live. I enjoy doing it. Everything else about it is okay, but there's again, there's there's pluses and negatives to anything you do in life. But like I said, football's all I know. And I'm, so I'm with just, your with your knowledge of the game and mm. your quality you had when you played, I mean, I always think like ex players make the best coaches for me. Mm. It, it, that, it's nice to have the structure of the the, the badges and all that, and you know, for badges, A badges and all that. I don't think there's any substitution for, for passing on your knowledge. Yes, I think it helps you be able to pass the knowledge on in a, Interpret, you know, yeah. in a in players can understand yeah. it. So instead of just mm. right, do this. Yeah. So I do get it from that point of experience. Would you would you look at getting back in? I am now. That's one thing that I'm doing and, and that's what I'm looking to do. I'm actively looking to do it oh, right yeah. now. Yeah, I've got my B license, I'm gonna I'm hopefully gonna start my A this summer. Brilliant. Um and ultimately I need first and foremost I need I'm I want to get in at a, a lower level, maybe a youth team level, um, and learn about myself as a coach. Right. But the end goal is for me to become a manager because I think. Would you like to become manager yeah, down the line? I, I would. Have you played with some, I mean, look at the, play, the managers you mentioned, George yeah. Graham, Pardews, yeah. 
Chris, uh, uh, Chris Hooten. And yeah. There's a, there's a there's knowledge there that you've... Definitely. Well, you know, you take little snippets out of all of them and, and, and ultimately you be yourself more than anything. I don't think you, you can try and mould yourself into a, a Pulis or a, a Hoddle or whatever, um, or George Graham or whoever. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I want to give it a go, and I, I think that I, you know I've got a lot to give back. So um, that, that's that's the end goal. But first and foremost, I want to do like I did my apprenticeship at Peterborough in those younger years and learn about stuff as a footballer. I want to do that as a coach. I don't want to go some some players it works for um, or ex players, and they go straight into management. I think I need to learn about myself first and foremost before I get there. I think it's really smart. I think it's really smart because mm. it is. I mean, you you you. I think you'll pick up. I mean, I've done it for four or five years. Now. Yeah. I'm not on down the management route, but the coaching side of things. You do, and you get better yeah, by exactly. doing it. Yeah. So I think for, for you to think you want to do it with the, sort of the youth teams and mm. all that, I can imagine you passing that knowledge on the youth team players and learning about yourself. Yeah. And I think it'd be great. Yeah. It's just the, the way the game is now, and, and um, how big it is. It, it's just trying to get in somewhere. That, that's yeah. that's the problem. You know, it's just so saturated now and every job you go for even though you've got connections in football and blah 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 it's the, everyone wants to be a coach you know ex-players and, and people from outside the game which is absolutely fine but you go for jobs there's two three hundred applicants and that's just the way football is now you know yeah well I'd like to think you know with, with some of the clips we've seen I've got a, I've got a few clips for you in a minute so I'm going to let you relive right, okay. and you can have a watch it there because yeah. there's nothing better I love watching but I'm not even I don't even know oh, yeah, shame to admit it now oh, of course yeah. So, oh, yeah I remember I used to do that <laughs> it's brilliant but listen you know whatever you're going to learn down the coaching and management route I think you'd be a fantastic coaching manager yeah. you know and down the line if you need a goalie coach I might be be the first call, be there for you, yeah. mate. But, uh, listen what a great interview I've loved every second of that um, fantastic insight we'll put it together and then my good friend Matty Efferington I'm so pleased he's came on and, and shared that with us so Matty, top mate nice one star mate well done all the best yeah.